Good afternoon and welcome to the 2002 Alumni Roundtable. Each year at the high school we invite recent seniors, graduates of last year to come back and talk a little bit about their high school experiences and reflect about their first six months in college and we're here to do that this afternoon. And it's my pleasure to have all of you with us today. Seated to my left is our superintendent of schools, Dr. Sherry King, and we're very happy to have her with us. Thank you. Um, we, uh, we're going to begin the program with asking each of you to introduce yourselves and tell a college that you currently attend. Okay. I'm Jordan, <laughs> Jordan Shulkin from Wesleyan University. I'm Suzanne Alshuler and I go to Brown University. I'm Jossie Florence, I go to Middlebury College. I'm Sarah Lyons, I go to Lafayette College. I'm Vivi Schweitzer, I go to the University of Pennsylvania. I'm Rachel Green, I go to Dickinson College. I'm Lisa Goldstein, I go to Johns Hopkins. I'm Amanda Schwartz, I go to Stanford University. I'm Rachel Blushman, and I go to Wesleyan University. I'm Jen Garabedian, and I go to Muhlenberg College. I'm Jeremy Adler, and I go to Brown University. I'm Peyton Purcell, I go to Davidson College. I'm Eric Nathan, and I go to Yale University. I'm Megan Kane, I go to Harvard College. I'm Adam Visno, and I go to Swarthmore College. I'm Melanie Weiss, and I go to Sarah Lawrence College. What a group. <coughs> and before, before we start, let me just ask you to relax, smile for the camera. Yep. Your parents are watching you. And just to say that we miss you very much, and this is a very nostalgic day for me, having you back. So let me start with a general question. How's the first six months gone for you at college? Fantastic. Really well. <laughs> <laughs> but remember, you're in college answering more than one, <laughs> one word. That was acceptable. Well, well, I've learned that. The fewer the words, the, the better. <laughs> My English teacher told me that. Yeah. But what makes it Anybody? fantastic? Yeah. The, the, the people, the classes, the interest of the classes, the amount of freedom you have. You have there's a lot more free time and more oppor extracurricular opportunities available. Somebody else, how the first six months have gone? Lisa? I think it's really exciting because you're with people who are on your intellectual level, but I still think at the same time you learn that you still all have your strengths and weaknesses. And just because you're with people on the same level as you does not mean, like I had, in Wharton we have a required class for all freshmen called Management 100, and you work in a team of 12 kids, and I was so excited to work with people who are, you know, on my intellectual level. So like the first time I felt I was doing group work where, you know, I knew everyone would do their fair share, or at least I thought, but you still learn just because you're all the, like you just learn that people are still the way are still sometimes the way you expect and I don't know it's just really exciting to be able to be on your own and to be able to really start making a difference in the world. Good. I heard somebody say fair because it's not all just <laughs> fabulous. No? Well I think it I mean it has its ups and downs like it's yeah. definitely a hard transition. I What's mean it wasn't I didn't get there and I wasn't like wow this is the best place <laughs> ever I love it here it's fantastic. I Were mean, you surprised at that? No, I wasn't, that's totally what I expected. I mean, you know, you have some good times, you have some not so good times, but I think for most of us, the good times probably outweigh the bad, so. So what are some of the hard times? <coughs> what are some of the harder things about the transition? When you get sick and your parents aren't there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And when you get sick and you still have three papers to do the next day and you have to do them. And yeah. <laughs> Do you still feel after six months you're in a transition phase? You feel you're over the hump and really uh, comfortable now in college? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I feel like we're past yeah. the hardest part, and there's still more to go. But I, I think we've definitely um, gotten most of the most difficult stuff out of the way. Did most of the adjustment issues come at the very beginning when you first yeah. got to college? What kinds of things did you have to deal with? Living with someone else. <laughs> <laughs> that comes up every year. Let's talk about that. Um, how many of you have one roommate? So have the roommate issues been a problem, or have no. you had good roommates, compatible roommates? The best roommate in the world. <laughs> no, that's yeah. great. And we're, it's funny that like we're different, very different people, but we're alike in all the ways that really matter for a roommate. And she and I are really good friends, and just. For me, it was really easy to learn to live with someone because we just both decided that it was going to work, and then it just did. So, I, I don't know. I've heard a lot of uh, in the past people were like, "Oh my God, roommates are terrible." But like, I yeah. love her to death. So, 
I'm curious to hear from other people because what we hear every year is that the roommate situation is not an easy one and many people do have difficulties. Has anybody had an experience different from what Melanie had? I actually have switched roommates since I've been at college. Okay. I had an awful roommate yeah. and it was a really, really <laughs> bad experience for the first three weeks. But my, um, the res life on campus was really helpful and I, now I live with my best friend because she had an issue also so we moved in together and now it's fine. But it can be really hard being at college and like just getting there and having an awful living condition. It just it makes everything so much harder because you don't feel comfortable in your room and that's a problem. Rachel, was it just that you were incompatible personality wise? It, yeah, we just had, we lived our lives very differently and it was hard to have that like comfort level with the two of us since it was just, we were just too different. Have any of you had roommates like from completely different kinds of backgrounds, yeah. different yeah. parts of the country, you know, very different experiences? Yeah. So tell us about um, that. Well, actually, I had sort of the, I have no problem with my roommate. We're really good friends, um, and I think our differences have actually helped us a lot because it's almost easier. I know having a sibling, it's easier to live with someone, I think, who is different from you, um, or from me anyway. Um, my roommate is from Bulgaria, uh, and he has a completely different background from the one I have, like, mm. in just about every way. Mm. Um, but, yeah, it's really interesting, and I have never met anybody from an ex-Soviet country. Um, and he has a great perspective on things, and, yeah, he's really funny. And, yeah, so I've had a good experience with my roommate. Some others in roommate, Jeremy? Oh, I, I have an interesting <laughs> one, because my roommate, he kind of, he lives in Warwick, which is, like, 20 minutes outside of Providence, and for some reason he decided not to... <coughs> live in my room, so he hasn't lived there since orientation. So he, so he, provi he, provi yeah, he, he, provided, he provided the TV, a phone, a fridge, and he, and he, and he hasn't slept there since orientation. Hey. <laughs> Does he stay there during the day? I see him That's once about every two or three days. He sometimes takes a nap there or does a little homework there and then leaves. Jeremy, we're going to have to explore this later. For me. <laughs> Anybody else, roommates? My, I, I had kind of a different situation. I, my roommate is on the cross-country team, and that was different just to live with somebody who is such an intense athlete and I moved in and she had already been there for three weeks um, at preseason and she already had friends on the team so that was a little different just because I couldn't really relate to her what she was going through and she she really has a different perspective on school than a lot of other people because she's really there as an athlete first so it's worked out really well but it definitely was not what I, I had no idea what to expect, mm -hmm. and it was just a little different. But I think, I mean, we definitely live together very well, but it was just a little different. You know, since we're on roommates, I want to switch to the social scene a little bit, because when we interview people who are in their first year of college, they often tell us that um, the social aspect of college life is really difficult. They had a lot of close friends at college, uh, mm -hmm. in high school, I'm sorry, and then they get to college, and it's very hard to make a circle of friends. Has that been the case for you? The hardest thing I think I found is that um, you get to orientation and you're so anxious to just find people that you can hang out with that first day, those first couple of days, and I think that I, you then realize that there are people you hung out with for the first week of school that you barely see anymore, and like whether you get tied to a group of friends because you were you wanted to jump in so quickly, then you find that there are other people that you'd want to be hanging out with. Like it's almost like you feel at first you get stuck, but then you realize that there's so many other people there, and like. It's nice that you can hang out with different people all the time and that you don't need to be stuck to the same group of people all the time. And um, I think you also forget that you knew people in high school for so long and it took a while to become friends with the people that you were friends with. And I think it, it takes time in college to become friends with people and you have to give it time to you know get to know people and get to know what their interests are. But I think that definitely meeting people through classes and stuff where you have common interests um, it's been really, I think that that's kind of a good way to do it. No, we've never talked about that in the show. Have you made friends primarily through meeting people in classes? No. no. I, I live with my friends. We're in your dorms, like the people yeah. who you have classes yeah. with in your dorms and who you go to din like dinner with. Yeah. <laughs> and are you still in lots of email contact with high school friends? Is that at the same yeah. pace? Yeah. Is it slowing down? What about that? I think it's hard to stay in touch with friends from school. I just, I mean, you get so crazy and so wrapped up in what's going on that it just becomes <coughs> like, I don't know, it just gets really, really hard to stay in touch. Mm -hmm. I mean, you make the phone calls like at once a week, but it, I mean, you're, living, you're learning to live by yourself and that kind of also means learning to live without 
the like that comfort level that you have with your friends from high school and elementary school even. So I know Dr. Warfringer is going to want to move on to school, but before you do that... Um, no, you're wrong. Oh, good. <laughs> this is what? like Katie Corky. Yes, go ahead, Katie. <laughs> like Matt Lau. So what about, uh, what's it like to be home and your parents ask you where you're going and what time you're coming in? <laughs> oh, Have you really done your laundry yet? Is it, is it hard? Is it great? Is it both? It's so much better, I think. I don't know. I have like more respect for my parents, and like I appreciate them more now that I don't live there, kind of. And like I can have like real conversations. Like I haven't had like the whole like control power trip problem yet, but I don't know. I, my parents have been good about it. They realize that like I'm on my own in college, mm -hmm. so they can't like strap on the same rules now that I'm home. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they still expect things of me mm -hmm. that like I have to accept my own consequences. Like I have a job, and if I want to be out until <coughs> like three or four in the morning, I have to wake up. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to wake me up. I have to be up. So I have to know when I want to be home to get up for my job. Jenna, and that works. Jen, I hope after your parents see this, they feel the same way. <laughs> I truly do. Um, since we like to vary the show and ask a few different mm -hmm. questions, I have something that I don't think I've ever asked before. When you guys look for a college, you often say, do I want to be in an urban, a suburban area? Do I want a large or small? And that's a very big aspect of the decision, the location, of what the college feels like. Now that you're in college, um, are you happy with the location where the college is and the kind of college, large or small, in terms of when you looked, Megan? Um, yeah, definitely. I really like being, I'm in Cambridge, which is right near Boston. You can take the subway and go to Boston anytime you want. And it's really, I found it really fun to be in an urban environment. And I like the size a lot. We have 1,650 per class. And I think it's a good size because you can, you can recognize everyone, but it's not that small mm -hmm. that gossip goes around and stuff like that. And you like the feel of Cambridge of being yeah. in that? Yeah. Um, I go to Lafayette College and there are only 2,300 people and I'm in Easton, Pennsylvania. Um, but I love it and everything mm -hmm. that people say about small liberal arts colleges I think is true and um, I've had really small classes and gotten to know a lot of people very well in a short amount of time. Um, so you know, we sort of live in our own little world, um, but I think that after college I'll live in the city. But I think it's nice for four years um, to be in that type of atmosphere. Yeah, I have a similar, I mean, I'm in Middlebury, and really it's not a joke when you drive to Middlebury, you drive past Cowfield. Um, we're really in the middle of nowhere. I mean, you know, there's not very much around, but it's actually, I thought that that was going to be really hard, but it's actually one of the best parts of going to school there, because you're all just sort of in this community together. Most people don't leave campus on the weekends and you're just all there, but that means that so much happens on campus because you sort of, you know, make the best of this incredible setting that you've been placed in. So it's been really nice. And there are times where, you know, you want, you want uh, like sushi, you know, <laughs> and you're not going to get that <laughs> in Vermont. Um, but, but usually you're so happy to be there that it's okay. I love being in Baltimore. Like it gets it gets a bad rap sometimes. Like my parents included, they're like, "Is it safe? Is it safe?" But um, <laughs> I just I love the combination that you get of having a camp a beautiful campus, which we do, but then also you're in a city and like the way it's set up, it's kind of more like a whole bunch of neighborhoods rather than one big city. And like the area that it's in is just it's really conducive to college students. Like. Um, it's like your own little college town, but it's also kind of residential and like a five minute taxi ride south, you get to the Inner Harbor, which is um, somewhat expensive, but fun if you like, mm -hmm. if you want to do that for a <coughs> night, you know, they have great restaurants and shopping and stuff like that. So I think that I really enjoyed having both the city and the campus right there. Jordan, how about you in terms of the size and the location? Uh, You're uncharacteristically quiet, Jordan. I mean, <laughs> this is deeply upsetting to me. I'm trying to, like, you know, think before I speak. <laughs> uh, uh, my school, Wesleyan, kind of has the whole the same bubble thing that uh, Jossie was talking about. I think it forces everyone to get to know each other and do activities together. Instead of going out into the, the town, we have a m called Middle Town, <laughs> i.e. Middle of Nowhere Town. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know. Yeah. I'm sorry. No. Yeah, Dr. King, who knows me quite well, knows that it's only a matter of time before I move on to academics. So let me start. Can I just have your favorite course in college and why? Melanie. literature and politics is the best thing that has ever happened to me. We ever. love you, Melanie. We love you. <laughs> um, it's, uh, Give us the title of something you would have read that 
um, Nervous Conditions oh, by uh, that grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> it, and my teacher, who's also my mentor for four years, yeah. is the most she's brilliant and the course has taught me to like I think differently and I totally see the world in a different kind of context now and it's I feel it's more than just learning about this amazing literature which it also is like it's a very empowering skill for looking at the world and yeah you, you were a very strong English student when you were at the high school <clears throat> did what you learned here um, help you in terms of analyzing the books and thinking about literature there? Um, uh, yeah, there are things here, I think, but also, like, it, it's just a radically different approach. We're sort of subversive at college, so, like, it's definitely a different way of looking at things. Okay. But there are definitely skills here that I learned here that helped, for We're sure. We're going to get back to that later. Um, <laughs> other people's favorite course and why? Um, I took a class on the history of contemporary architecture, and it was kind of just a random pick. I had three classes, and I needed one more class that fit into my schedule. <laughs> and so I decided it sounded really interesting, and um, so I signed up for the class, and it's been one of my favorite classes. I leave there just being so excited about all the material that I'm learning. And next semester, I'm taking a class on film architecture with the same professor, and it's just been so... it's unlike any other class that I've taken before and really taught me to look at what's around me and not, I mean, we look at buildings and I guess also I find that it combines like the math and science that I've liked too because you look at the angles of the building and so it's really been um, inclusive of a lot of stuff that I've liked and so. And do you like it so much that you think you might be an architecture major? Um, I don't know, I don't know, I haven't really decided yet, um, but I definitely want to take more <coughs> classes in the department, and I really have enjoyed and gotten to know my professor better, which has been really great. I take, took a finance <laughs> class this semester, <laughs> oh sorry, <laughs> that I really enjoyed. Um, I'm, sorry, I'm in a honors program in Wharton, and it's like, the, I mean the class is kind of amazing. It's, we had a professor come out of retirement to teach us because he just missed teaching, you know, this material and these, you know, these bright kids so much. And we actually had two different professors. It was micro and macro in one semester instead of two, which is what everyone else takes. And I mean it's really intense, but it really started to change my way. I think I was prepared because I'd had AP macro with Mr. Solwell, and I appreciated that. And it really changed just like a lot of the way I think about the world and like I read the Wall Street Journal every day now and I just I sort of like I just think I'm a lot more informed and I really understand the way the economy works which I don't think I totally had under control before but so I, I just made me a lot more interested in the field. Sounds great. Rachel? Um, my favorite class was actually a dance class. It was Bharatanatyam and that's South Indian classical dance mm -hmm. and um, the first half of the class, we'd always sit down and we'd either watch videos or discuss articles we read. So we learned a lot about the history of the dance form and how it evolved. And we learned a lot about South Indian culture. But then the second like hour and a half would be this intense, intense um, dancing. And it was really like you always left in a pool of sweat. It was really hard and, <laughs> and really cool. And like the end, our final kind of was like, um, this big performance and we the costumes were ridiculously expensive and that really <laughs> bothered me about it but we had these crazy like we had um, probably like 15 pieces of jewelry we had to put on saris um, and it was just really cool it just yes. gave you a completely so different cool. cultural experience and I loved it and so of course when you were favorite. here you were pretty immersed in dance mm -hmm. yeah well. yeah I did a lot of dance right. in high school but this right. was just so completely different yeah. and a different culture of dance, so it was cool. Others' favorite course? Yeah. Well, uh, Eric? I took a... <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, Jordan, I apologize. We'll get back to you. <laughs> I took a non-fiction <laughs> writing English class, which Ooh. was really fascinating. Uh, it was about how to craft better, write better arguments. And so we read many different controversial essays on controversial topics. Um, art, it was really interesting reading, and I thought that I got a better sense of how to write more concisely. And at the end, we had a really great uh, research paper that we got to choose the topic for, and that was a lot of fun. So is that where you learned to use fewer words you were told to? Yeah, I actually had to trim my paper down to like six pages, so it can, can you just talk for a second about how, did, how does that writing compare to the kind of writing you were doing here? Um, well, we 
wasn't m as much on like analytical on mm -hmm. pieces of writing. Mm -hmm. Like I mean, books, non -fic right. fiction books. This is more we assess the pe person's argument and, and make our argument what our response. So mm -hmm. we had a lot of readers' journal entries where we responded in about a page or so mm -hmm. uh, to what the author said. And okay. So that, that it was good. Now we're back to Jordan. <laughs> yeah. I was going to do least favorite. Is that OK? That's <laughs> actually, that's interesting. OK. Uh, and why? Yeah. OK. Uh, multivariable calculus. <laughs> <laughs> when you throw in those extra variables or two, you got a problem. <laughs> the math, the math uh, teaching is very good here, but <laughs> the class was way above my head, as I realized about three-fourths of the way through the semester. Too late to drop it. Um, and I took a, a Jewish history class, which I thought would be, you know, in the bag. <laughs> Jewish. <laughs> I have history. <laughs> it ended up being. You know, when you get warmed up, you really get going, Jordan. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> ended up being really not so good of a class. Uh, it really depends on what kind of professor you get if the class is good. My professor was rather inexperienced. And she wasn't even Jewish. I don't know if that really should have been a problem for me. But she was just talking about Jewish history at length. I was just thinking to myself, you're not Jewish. <laughs> you know, I'm just wondering, Melanie talked about your course, your lit course. You said the teacher was fabulous. Are all the fabulous courses that you've taken in college directly tied to a teacher? in your yeah. opinion yeah. is just a superb yeah. teacher? Yeah. Like my, my favorite class is um, called Contemporary International Politics, and it's a 300-person lecture um, twice a week. And, but I loved it because the professor was just amazing. Like His presence in front of this group and like the way he would talk, and he's, there was no way you couldn't understand the material with him speaking the way he does. And like, in that kind of a setting, like even with so many people in the class, like well, first of all, because so many people take it, you like one of your friends is always taking the class with mm. you if it's that big, <laughs> um, at least. And so I just more than ever, like a good teacher is just so important. Um, but I've also found that like I'm sure they do this in other schools that like big lectures like that will break down into sections with grad students once a week also. And I found that when you get to these sections, they're they're small. They're like 15 to 20 kids. Um, so much more is expected of you, I felt, than I think, like, bef unlike before, people actually want to know your opinion rather than just what you think of somebody else's opinion, which is like you were saying what's different about writing papers. Mm -hmm. Instead of just analyzing what somebody else wrote, like, they want to know what you think and they want to know why you think that way. Um, and just, I feel like these grad students who are, you know, going for their masters or PhDs in these topics, they, they assume that you're that you know as much as they do when you have conversations with them and that it really has keeps you on on your toes and it's much different one more favorite course um, i took uh i also took a jewish history course and i like that but that wasn't my favorite actually i took this uh english course called cultural practices and social texts um which kind of uh, was took a very theoretical like it took a an approach to english that was more in accord with i guess really modern theory um so we would analyze these texts and sort of forget about the authors and apply them, um, or not really apply them, but actually say what these texts are acti actively doing to define some kind of cultural practice or um, to define some kind of power structure. And I, of course, had never done anything like that here. Um, and I also, back on the writing thing, um, I definitely think that the volume of writing in MHS helped me a lot um, just to be able to like churn out a paper in a certain amount of time. Um, that is a certain length and that has that sort of has an argument. But what I found really frustrating in college was that, um, or at least with my professors, like no argument that I had, I really pushed far enough. So I mean, like, for instance, I would say this huge thing in Great Expectations about how, you know, Pip's development is also is parallel to the development of the middle class in England, and like, you know, I thought that it, in, in the 19th century, and I thought that that was a great thesis. And then my professor wrote all over the paper, you know, like. But why are you arguing arguing this? Like, who cares? And that was sort of like my the response to yeah. to all my professors that there's like uh, from all my professors that there's this sort of the who cares factor, uh -huh. or the so what factor in everything you write. Um, so I found that to be a bit of a challenge because, I mean, like, it's a waste of your professor's time if you write a paper that he can't argue with. But are you saying that in general the college professors are much more critical 
of what you've um, written than, let's say, we were here at the high school? No, I think that there were, I think teachers are very critical here, but it's criticism on a different level. Um, I guess they really expect you to produce a piece, a work that could be published in mm -hmm. a journal, um, which I wasn't really used to. I don't think that you can really like do that in a high school setting, but I think that what I did have here, the volume of work I had here did help a little at least with starting to do that. Were you can well we prepared for the volume yeah. of work? Because we, often we hear like just the amount of reading or the number of papers when you're sick and you just have to do that. I, I think that I was prepared for the amount of work and I tried to balance my schedule so it wasn't all reading. And, mm -hmm. Um, but I think that where I found it difficult was doing research. I think that I would go into the library and be kind of overwhelmed by um, having to write a paper. And I think that something that I learned from that was really to try to reach out and talk to my professors and talk to other people and ask for help and, mm -hmm. you know, email, talk to your teachers during their office hours. It was an intimidating thing to do, but it really helped. And once I did that, I found that they were able to direct me right where I needed to go in terms of my research. Mm -hmm. But I think that maybe something that would have been helpful in high school was doing a little bit more. So it wasn't as intimidating mm -hmm. to start the paper and really just try to dive into it. Can we kind of follow what Suzanne said that, um, can you think back a little bit over high school and tell us about the things that we did well, quite frankly. We hope we did a lot of things well. And then maybe have a recommendation for us that if looking back you could have had something more, such as the research. Um, what might we take away from this and say we, we need to look a little bit differently at how we prepare students? Um, I'm really glad that I went to a co-ed public high school because I met a lot of people that went to single sex private schools, maybe affiliated with a certain religion. And I just think the, like the sports and the school spirit and a lot of club related things that I did in high school really prepared me and I just have fond memories of that. And um, I think that was a really good thing. I agree with Suzanne, though. Um, when it comes to researching, I, I sort of felt like I was at a little bit of a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. I wish I had some more experience. It's also different technologies that you have to get used to. Um, so that's what I think mm -hmm. I wish I was better at. I think also the, something that I found in the beginning was, um, the beginning of college, was just the fact that you were sort of thrown all this work and given sort of a vague time schedule as to when necessarily was the right time to do any of this. <laughs> and a lot of things where, like, you were told to read a book by, like, they would give you four days to read a book. And I, it, that, I found that to be difficult in the beginning to tr sort of figure out when I, sh when was the right time to be doing all of this stuff. But the one thing I, definitely did appreciate coming from the high school was I think this ties into the open campus and just sort of the level of respect that I think we always received from our teachers here was I, I sort of felt well prepared in terms of having some idea of how to handle things on my own and knowing I, I ne especially meeting people at college and hearing their high school experiences I never felt like we at the high school here were necessarily told directly when to do everything, which definitely helped in some respects when I got to college because it wasn't as overwhelmed. I had friends who were completely overwhelmed by all the freedom and I didn't ever find that. But I think, so I think emphasis on sort of allowing students to move at their own pace and not necessarily have, being told exactly when to do everything is definitely a good skill to have. Others what else did we do well? Yeah. <laughs> the Pace program, um, well, it probably taught me a whole lot about performing arts. I think that in there I learned really how to take myself seriously and to take what I'm doing seriously. Um, I think that I've profited more from that than anything else um, in college because um, I just think that I, whether I'm speaking in class or you know, seeing a professor on some of my research or doing research in the library or calling, you know, an archive in Kentucky to try to get some manuscript from them that they don't want to send me. Like, I have the vocabulary and the attitude to take myself seriously that I didn't have, I think, before high school. Um, I think Pace teaches you that by getting you to perform or getting you to create something and uh, and doing it and having you do it of your own initiative um, and as a result you have to take yourself seriously and I definitely took that to college. So, so help us just w one more piece. How is that different than AP Euro or AP oh. Economics? Well, well I probably shouldn't speak about Euro, but, <laughs> <laughs> but um, AP US. I, actually, I mean, I really loved, like, you know, the AP US history, but, like, it didn't really, I mean, those essays that I wrote for that won't really get me anywhere. Okay. In I mean, the, 
But like, what do you mean? They taught me something else. They gave me a skill, like, they gave me the skill to be able to write under pressure, mm -hmm. and I definitely learned the facts. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I learned a little bit how to look into how to interpret what happened in history. But I think that um, as far as, like, giving me an attitude or, like, some mm -hmm. kind of, or giving me um, some kind of self-sufficiency, I mean, I don't think it really did that because mm -hmm. it was a very much like a, I mean, it was a very much a high school course, but. One more of you, something we did well, something that you think we need to look at? I, I liked that there were so many opportunities in high school to get involved and to be an active member in high school. And there were so many cool clubs you could do and so many different programs. And I just think that really helped me to go to college and want to get involved and go to like a protest or audition for a show, even though I thought, oh, I could never get into the show. It just like, it, all the different opportunities and things to do in high school really helped me. And I talked to friends, and so many of my friends were completely uninvolved in their high schools. And I mean, I guess you could kind of go through Maronite High School and not be very involved, but it's a lot, I feel like it, it would be hard, because it's just a really positive thing to get involved in this high school. And, um, and that's like one of the really important things that I feel like Wesleyan is all about, being really involved in everything. And so, I feel like that helped a lot. Rachel, I'm just curious. We have one of the richest high schools in terms of extracurricular activities. You folks were involved in band and pace and so many clubs. Are you involved now <laughs> in some extracurricular activities? And if so, what? Well, Do you play sports? I've, Do you? Yeah, I'm involved in seven extracurricular music groups. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a surprise, Eric. <laughs> right. Well, I guess that's, that's enough. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff, like every day of the week. Yeah, and is the music <coughs> program strong there? Fantastic. Yeah, I think that, like, when you're involved in high school, like, it, it becomes easier to get involved in college. And when you're at Maronick, you get so many opportunities that, you know, it's sort of, I auditioned for, for a show, for a theater show. And, you know, I had done it in high school, so it really wasn't a big deal to do it at college. It wasn't this new thing. It just felt pretty natural, you know? I've auditioned before. It wasn't such a big deal. So I think I was more ready to do that in college because I had in high school. And that goes for, you know, writing for a newspaper or, you know, getting involved on an on a intramural team or something. You know, because you got the chance to do it at Mamaroneck, then then I think you're more likely to do it in college, which is nice. I see. I also think that all of the extracurriculars here um, really gave me the skill of, I think I had a really good idea of myself. Like, yeah. through high school, I gained this appreciation of who I was, which was really valuable in school, because I found that a lot of my friends who had come from more rigid high school structures, in addition to all this, like, mm -hmm. like stuff about having to, like, figure out how to live on your own, had this huge added responsibility of trying to figure out who they were. And I think that's really hard. And I was really very pleased to find that the things like the things that I'd cultivated in my life in high school had given me this very strong idea of self that was a, not just an asset, but for me it was a necessity to like go to college and be able to say, like this is what I am, this is what I do, this is okay. Um, and I think that, yeah, Mamaronek had a big part in my ability to do that. Hmm. Uh, what I always liked about here is, um, they, you know, one of the things they you offer, Maronick offers so much different stuff, and you know, even if you're not sort of inclined in the area, in an area, you can go and do it and really enjoy it. Like, um, I took ceramics here, and I really, and I didn't, you know, I'm not artistically inclined, but I really enjoyed it. And then, you know, like I go to college, and I, you know. I, I tried swing dancing. I'm not, I'm not like a big mm. dancer, but now I actually <laughs> <laughs> now I have rhythm. So like. I want to get you and Rachel together at the end of the program. Uh, you know, I wasn't going to ask this, but I'm going to ask it. I'm just going to plunge in. Uh, we've had a, a lot of talk this past few months about drinking mm -hmm. in high mm -hmm. school, and I know parents are very concerned because one of the things that's always mentioned is that when you get to college, you're on your own, and you have to cope with that and deal with the freedom. Is there a great deal? of drinking and partying, truthfully, during the week. Um, and how does it affect your life? I think you have the opportunity yeah. at almost any school to go into that sort of lifestyle. But it's not, I mean, at least at my school, it's not something that you have to do to be you know, part of a crowd or anything. And I go to a really small school where fraternity life is basically the only social life, I mean, it would seem. But that's not really the case. Because, yes, 
that's where most of the parties are, but there are plenty, like the school offers plenty of other opportunities if you don't want to do that. And you can get as involved in it or as uninvolved in it as you want. So I think, I mean, yes, it does exist here in Mamaroneck as well, but I think, you know, having had, I mean, not that it's a good thing that lots of alcohol is here, but having been exposed to it slightly, you can sort of say in college, it's not this big deal. Now there's suddenly alcohol flowing everywhere and like, oh my God, I have to get it all. You know, we've, we've seen it and like, it's not, you know, it's, so it's not such a culture shock. I also think a big thing at college is that um, while it's around all the time, just because of the different kind of environment you're in, if you say, no, I really don't want to go out tonight, or, you know, I have this big, I have a big paper, do I have a lot of work to do tonight? No one's going to say to you, oh, no, come out, you know, you got to come. They'll be like, oh, okay, you have work to do. Because, you know, next week I'll have a lot of work to do. Like, so, so, Lisa, was the pressure to drink greater in high school than you think it is in college? I think it can be. I think that, it, I think... I think the idea of peer pressure much more depends on the person rather than <coughs> on their peers. Like, if you decide you're not going to feel the need to go out drinking all the time, then it won't be. But it's much easier for you for you to feel pressured to have to be out on a I don't know a Thursday or Friday night. I know I, n I mean I never really experienced weeknight drinking when I was in high school. Apparently, <laughs> if it's becoming more of a problem now, but um, I just think that your options become easier and like there's no need to do anything in order to fit in. So do cell phones go off in classes? <laughs> yes. I've yes. had professors' <laughs> cell phones go off yes. in classes oh, actually. actually. So they're everywhere. Yeah. Which is <laughs> not a good thing. <laughs> I think it's else easier to say no in college. Gym? I think it's much more acceptable to go sober. I think though like my high, my high school, my college <laughs> is just like high school in terms of the party scene. I feel yeah. like I feel like it's the exact same thing. I come from a small school. It's like yeah. 2100. Yeah. And Greek life is big there. But I feel like it's much like nobody cares. Like it's not an issue. If you want to drink, you drink. If you don't, you don't. But I feel like so much in high school the like social scene revolves around alcohol that like if you're not part of it, I feel like you don't know what to do. So I mean like coming from a community where it's like very prevalent, it's not a shock when you come to college. Like I know people right. who weren't used to it so much. Or they weren't used to like people throwing up. Like I had to live live with people who would like throw up in my hallway, and that's like yeah. a big point of controversy. <laughs> but it's just not such a shot coming from like a community where like we talk about it first of all, mm -hmm. and we deal with it at the same time. I also find it interesting that um, at my school you don't really drive a lot, and we walk everywhere at night. Yeah. Um, and drunk driving and car accidents are a source of a lot of the problem here and in college where I am it's it's not an issue because yeah. you just walk everywhere so a major element is removed so I, I think it's safer and can I move back to a personal scene just as we're about to end the program mm -hmm. how often do you talk to your parents now once a week. Yeah, once a week. Yeah. Once yeah. twice a week. Oh, I talk to my, my parents, like, I talk to my dad, like, three times a day. And I'm like, oh, like, at least twice. <laughs> yeah, when I'm stressed out, I call my mom at least once yeah. a day. Yeah. Yeah. And having um, AOL, like, so yeah. nice. So nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my mom is on, like, well, she's not really there, but she's signed on <laughs> all the time. So I can always, like, instant messenger her and stuff. But you feel closer, don't you, just being able to, to yeah. email and talk yeah. on, online? Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. It's really nice. Right. They say technology depersonalizes things, but I think it's had just the opposite effect. <laughs> and that's how we should end the program. <laughs> <laughs> You have a way about you. Uh, wh wh here's my ending for the program. Do you have any one bit of advice mm -hmm. for students now in high school yeah. that you'd like to offer? I stressed a lot about schools because I did not get into most of my first choice schools. And I really wasn't as excited towards the end as I had been for so long. And like I uh, came back for Thanksgiving and I was like, so how are you? And I'm amazing at what? Yeah. Don't stress. <laughs> like things really do happen yeah. for a reason. And you may think like, oh god. I can't believe I'm going to this school instead of this one, but you will find the right place. Like, it is okay. That's reassuring because our seniors are going through that right yes, at yeah. this very moment high. and they're very stressed out. Other bits of advice you have for? Also, I think when you get to the campus, just make sure that you really take advantage of everything it has to offer. Like, just one thing about college that's kind of amazed me, I guess I sort of realized before I even went, is 
everything that's there. I mean, like I've already seen Bob Woodward and Rudy Giuliani speak this year and just like and been to a bunch of concerts and stuff like just really, I mean, I'm, you know, near, really near Philadelphia. I'm in Philadelphia, so I have that advantage, but I think I know even from like Jassy's experience, like bands go to her school. Mm -hmm. So like if your school is offering this to you, like, take it and you know take the opportunities and don't you know don't just sit in your dorm room waiting for you know someone to people to come to mm -hmm. you like go out and find things to do and just really really take advantage of it because I don't know I feel like it's like so many things that I like tell my parents like oh I went to this tonight or that and you know I saw this or I saw a great debate between Thaler and Ma mm -hmm. like Machiel about um, the macro like the like psychology of the macro economy it's just like so interesting and my parents will say like oh I'm jealous I wish I could have done that or heard that so I think it's kind of you know it's interesting that like we're 18 years old and we get all these great opportunities so I just think it's important to remember that it's a very good point um, any other Rach I just think everyone every senior should just really enjoy the end of senior year with their <laughs> yeah, friends no, because no. now yeah. now it's like I come home and I see like my best friends for like three days and then mm -hmm. I'm like bye mm -hmm. <laughs> even winter break and so I don't know everyone should just like really have fun senior year and don't worry and just be with your friends <laughs> and I want to end on a personal note um, mm -hmm. I say without any embarrassment I really miss you I really miss you. When I saw you today, I realized how you've enriched my life and enriched the high school, and it's great to have you back. And uh, that's a legacy that you have. I mean, you really have given a lot to the high school, and you've meant a lot to all of us in the community. And I'm so thankful that you're here today. Uh, I wish you a good second semester. Don't drive your parents crazy uh, while you're here. Sleep, Sleep, Sleep and relax. Home, yeah. um, would you like to say something? Just have time? a wonderful holiday and be safe. And um, thank you for coming back and sharing. Come back again. Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.